bishop go through, he's still going to pray for Pastor George. And after all he go through, he's going to pray for the missionaries and deacons and members that left. After all he go through, after all they said about him, after all they did to him, he's still going to pray for him. Love him. Intercede for him. Because he, he understands what they don't understand. The truth is that they're weak. And when I see their weakness, it's not a time for me to, to, to stand up and boast. It's not a time for me to stand up and be proud. It's a time for me to stand in the gap and be strong for those that are weak. You ain't got nobody standing in the gap for you because you ain't willing to stand in the gap for nobody else. When you see somebody weak, you, you take that as an opportunity to show how strong you are. But God said, because you're strong in one area, don't mean you're strong in all areas. I need you to know the truth today. It says, and, 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 and we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sin. He went, he went through what he went through for you. Here you are in your mother's womb. Your mama ain't did nothing but want to have a baby. But look what she got to go through to have you. you do you know how many mamas that walked in the delivery room and said and saw that their sister was in pain, their friend was in pain, and then when they got pregnant, they said, I ain't going to go through that kind of pain and aborted the baby. Yeah. Yeah. But your mama didn't. And you got the nerve to raise your voice in her. Amen. You got the nerve not to acknowledge her. Amen. The pain she went through to have you got some nerve. The pain that G God went through so he can come back into our lives and we got nerve not to come to church, I dare you. Amen. The pain that he went through when man, when Adam walked out on him, <coughs> why do you think that we got to suffer to get with God? Because God had to suffer when we chose sin over him. Amen. The pain that God went through and did not yet destroy us. You don't know him. Because if you knew him, and all the pain that he endured the time that you chose sin over him, chose sin over his son, and he yet did not give up on you. You got the audacity to pick and choose whether or not to get up out your bed and come to church. I might stop right there before I run y'all out of here. <sighs> That's why y'all gotta forgive me. I'm trying to preach you out of where you don't want to be. And you think you want to be. I'm trying to preach you out of where you don't want to be that you think you want to be. You don't want to be without God. And the beautiful thing about it is, he, he keeps chasing you. He keeps knocking on your door. He keeps calling you. He keeps pressing. He keeps giving you what you want. I had to realize something. My wants were never as good as God's needs for me. He keeps giving you what you want and you keep avoiding his needs. He says, I'm not in this for you to fulfill my needs. He said, I'm in this to give you what you need, not what you God needs for you are much better than what you could ever want. He said, and, and we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a, a punishment for his sins. He, he was pierced by our rebellion. He was crushed for our sin. He was beaten so we could be made whole. Your mama endured nine months of not feeling attractive. Your mama endured nine months of knowing the pain like, like, like she never could imagine was coming. But she did it because of the, watch this, not because of how much she loved you while you was in the womb. She did it because of how much she knew she loved you when you came. The love your mama has for you it overrode the pain that was going to come for her to have to see what she loved. Marissa's Keisha. 
Missionary Keisha, y'all hear this? The pain you know is coming. I mean, I, I, I just can't imagine being a woman. I just can't imagine. I, y'all, y'all, I'll be praying for you. Because God said you have not because you asked not. If it's a week before we do that, I said, Lord, I'm asking you to give me another week. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't care. I don't care how good that child is. I know as much as I love her, somewhere along the line, God is going to cause you some pain. Somewhere along the line, Ron is going to cause you some pain. Somewhere along the line, BJ is going to cause you some pain. But I will still yet love her because I accepted the pain to bring them here. Jesus Christ. I will still love them. That's why a mother loved is unmatchable, mm -hmm. except by God. Mm -hmm. I knew the pain that you were gonna bring me before you got here. And no matter what pain your children bring you, as a mother, it's never as painful as that moment of them coming into this world. Am I right or wrong? Amen. I don't know nothing about that, but I'm, I'm just asking. I need, I need some response. Am I right or wrong? Right. 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 Notice what this. Jesus got poked in the side. He was Isaiah. It was brother Isaiah. Isaiah said he was pierced. He was pierced. Because I was rebellious. He was pierced because I was stubborn. He said, I'm going to do all of this so you not can only believe in God, but you have a chance to get to know God. Anybody understand? Anybody understand the the, 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 the the event of the cross? Um, when when Sister Vanessa, don't miss it. The event of the cross when, when, when Jesus was pierced was. Anybody know what, what what was significant about Jesus when he got pierced to the side? He was already dead. They were about to break their legs because they couldn't be on the cross at, at sunset, so they were going to break their legs so they could take them on the cross and they couldn't run away. But when they got to Jesus, they said, he's already dead. Yeah. Amen. So if he was already dead, why would you pierce a dead man in the side? Because only from the dead, only from the dead, meaning what? What looked dead, the blood that was left gave life for the return of God. What was dead, God said, I want you to understand something. I get more power out of something dead than I do something that thinks it's living. God said he get more power when you surrender and think you can't do nothing. You are useless. You are helpless. You can't help yourself. He said you think you're dead. He said I get more power out of something that's dead than something that thinks it is living. Because that thing that's thinking that it's living will think its way right out of the plans I have for him. So here was Jesus. Dead. Do y'all know what happened? I couldn't understand it for years that I, 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 I said what you said. For years I said what you said. I couldn't understand it. Here it is. They're piercing me in my side. I'm already dead. Why would you have to pierce a dead man in the side? I couldn't understand it, Brother David. Until I realized something. Pastor Nisa can't come into this church until the ground has been sanctified. My God, come on. God couldn't come back to this world until the ground had been sanctified with the blood of Jesus. So the blood that came out of him sanctified the earth for the return of who? God. Which gave us the avail to be with God now and not just have to wait till we get to him. Jesus Christ. He pierced him in the side to sanctify the earth for the return of God so I could get to know the truth before I left him. We'll be thirsty in a minute. That's all right. The ground had to be sanctified for the return of God. And God said, do you really think I came back just to walk amongst you? I came back so you could get to know the truth. I don't hate you. 
I didn't leave you, you left me. I didn't desert you, you chose Satan over me. You said you wanted the love of the woman versus the love of man. He says, now I'm gonna bring, give you a chance, woman, not to look at the flesh. Don't look at how handsome he is, or how fine he is. You know how fine Robert is. He just he, he, he is your man, Nick <laughs> Can't nobody do for you what Robert do for you. You see Robert, you should see Robert walk out there. Y'all watch Robert. Y'all gonna watch him, brother. Robert don't walk out that house in his in his in his, in his wife beater. I, I'm just using that that we call them t-shirts. Y'all know them t-shirts. Don't walk out in that t-shirt to, to, to show her. He walk out that t-shirt to show y'all. Don't mess with my woman. <laughs> <laughs> but I said all that to say this. When you want to get to know God, you don't look at the physical no more. You ever seen a pretty woman with a, a dude toy from the floor? Because yeah. she see the God in him. She ain't cared about how, how fine or how bad he look. Amen. You don't look for the temporary. Yeah. When I look at the flesh, I'm guaranteed a divorce sooner than later. But when I look at the spirit, I'm guaranteed love forevermore. And don't have to worry about the divorce sooner than. Here I am. I want to be married forever. And here I am, married a man that don't go to church that don't even know forever. My God. Here I am. I want to be married forever. And here I am, married a woman that don't go to church don't even know forever. So when I get what, what I'm supposed to get, a temporary marriage, why are you upset? Stop it, Bishop. Stop it. Would you stop it? Would you? No, I will not. Don't stop. Don't stop. Keep it up. You, 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 you set up on a temporary because you don't know eternal. Yeah, my God. You don't know eternal. You don't know what eternal looks like because you don't know the truth. Love don't, love lasts forever. Don't you tell me you love me and leave me. Amen. Amen. Love, real love ain't temporary. Amen. Amen. So if you love me, if you leave me, I thank God you left because you never love it. Hello, somebody. It was just my running away each day through my window. I watch her as she passes by. I don't know why I feel like right, I'm saying today. Right. <laughs> I say to myself, you're such a lucky guy. Y'all hear this? Look, 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 look. To have a God like him. <laughs> look, 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 look. It's truly a dream come true. Come on, Bishop. Out of all the gods that I've served in my life, there's none truly like you. It was just my imagination. What was it doing? Running away with me. It was just my imagination. Running. You say that to Robert, you'll say that to me. Away. You're better rush. With me. Ooh. Soon you'll be married and have a family. Watch it. You have a cozy little church on a place in the neighborhood, can't you see? I tell you, I. Imagine it all. It couldn't be a dream because God left me here to preach Amen. after I rebelled against Him. Yeah. I'm not a dream. I'm real. Amen. And I want you to know I don't think I'm real today. 
I know I'm real. Because I know the creator. And I accepted being the creation. And when you accept being the creation, you let God finish what he started in you. Then and only then can you accept what God has to do to finish what he started in others. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Bishop. I need you to know the truth. You were created out of love. The Bible says God is love and love is God. Amen. You show me where love will create something that is not going to take care of. Come on, Bishop. You show me where love will create something that is not going to take care of. You are not being told the truth and the place where you expect to in church. Love is going to take care of you. And I come to tell you, heaven is not your imagination. Heaven is yours. I need you today to want to know God more than you know anything else. I can't, I can't, I can't change your life. But I can set you up for God to come in and you can get to know him the way he knows you. See, what you don't know about yourself is the only thing natural about you is that you are love because you were created in the image of God. The only thing God ever said that, that, that referenced us was we were created in the image of God and God is love. The only thing natural about us is that we are love. But we let people hurt us. Say, I ain't gonna never love. I remember the first time I got hurt, I was, in, I was in 10th grade. I was going with a girl, she was in 12th grade. She was in 11th grade. She ended up going with a 12th grader by the end of my 10th grade year. You know what I did? I said, I ain't gonna never love nobody else like that. And it became a dog. But look what it did. <laughs> Do y'all see what happened? God showed me her something. He pulled me away from her. He left me away from her so I could appreciate her. And then the devil brought somebody that, I, the girl, kind of, she, she, everything about her, the only I like this girl so much when I was in 10th grade, she reminded me of help. You ever had, y'all ever had to set up for something too? Yeah. Because you couldn't get her on the bike? I told you you messed with me the other day. I told you I had you. <laughs> yeah, remember you had to sell for something too? A urban wannabe? <laughs> but I'm trying to tell you something. So when this girl, when this girl hurt me and broke my heart, I was incapable of loving what I needed to love. Because from that point forward, I let the world tell me, ain't gonna never let nobody hurt me like that again. Anybody ever said that? Amen. Raise your hand if you ever said that. Huh? So what are you saying? I ain't gonna love nobody. Stop saying that. <laughs> Stop saying that. Stop saying Y'all understand what I'm saying? Amen. On where you're saying, I ain't fit to love nobody. And here come your Boaz. Here come your Nubian queen. And you treat her like anything but what she is. Been there, done that. Got a t-shirt in it. I can tell you about it. So when I finally got my first lady, I was still walking in my place of, I ain't gonna let nobody hurt me like that. So here she was, loved me with all her heart. And I'm dog and I. Cheating on them. Running around them. Abusing them. All because of a love I wanted that didn't want me. You can't make nobody want you. When you're trying to make somebody want you, all that tells me is you don't know God. Because if you know God, you trust God to send you who he got for you. Amen. I'm through. But I want to, to close y'all out with this. I want you to hear this. As I leave. Everybody alright? Yeah. Can I go now? Yeah. 
I want to close you out with this. And I, as I close you out, Mr. Aaron, I'm not going to stay up here all day because you like hearing your bishop preach. Not today. It ain't going to happen. The Dolphins come on at 1 o'clock. They got another game to lose. Come on, man. I mean, I'm in truth. I can't, I'm in church. I got to tell them. I, I, I'm in church. I got I to gotta let everybody know that I know the truth. <laughs> And they were the servant to know the truth. I gotta, I'm in church. I gotta let everybody know I, I know the truth. So as I give you this, I want you to listen to this. And um, softly, do you play the keyboard? No. Okay, all right. You know anybody play the keyboard? No. All right. All right. That's gonna be your first assignment. Get me a keyboard player. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing with you. But I want you to hear this, and as you listen to this, I want you to understand something. Somebody say, God is real. God is real. What's not real is, what's not real. my fakeness of acting like I know him when I really don't know him. When I really don't know him. What's not real is me acting like I know him. When I really don't know him. How many people think they know God? Be honest. How many people want to get to know God better? Amen. Do you know all that you've done for yourself in your lifetime is nothing compared to what God want to give you? Nothing. When I say nothing, nothing. Nothing compared to what God wants to give you. God wants to give you the kind of love that says you are his everything. As I as I get ready to leave you, I'm gonna read a scripture to you. I'm gonna talk about the scripture for three minutes. And then I'm gonna let the love of God take over your life forevermore. And I said it and I mean it. For, forevermore. Romans 8 and 31 says we shall say, what shall we say about such wonderful things as these? What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? Those things that you're calling sinful, those people that you're calling out of their names, they are wonderful to God. He said, what you got to say about What you got to say about it says whether or not you won't know him or want to know him. You are wonderful. Why, what, 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 why, at the end of the day, what makes you wonderful? Is who was with the Alpha? Love was there when you were created. So if he said I'm Alpha and Omega and love was with him in the beginning, who's going to be with the Omega? Love. He said, I loved you in the beginning. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm going to love you in the end. Amen. I'm trying to get you to know the truth. Stop worrying about what's going on between the Alpha and the Omega and let it make you think God didn't love you when he brought you here. And if you can believe that, you'll believe that he's not going to love you when, he, when you leave here. I need you to know that you are a wonder of God that's full of love. And, and the thing about it is the world has us so twisted. What do we run around trying to do all our lifetime? To show that we don't know God. I just want to come to love me. I'm a good I'm a good woman. Oh, I just want somebody to love me. I'm a good man. I, I do everybody right. I just get somebody to love me. You don't know the truth. You are a wonder full of love and what makes you feel good if you were in the class this morning. Sister Vanessa said it. Missionary Mary Lee said it. It's not the love that I get, but the love that I give. Amen. That's 
what makes me feel full. That's what makes me feel good. Amen. There is nothing that makes a cheating man feel worse than his wife loving him while he's cheating. You want, you want to hit him and you want to bring lamps up. Yep. I didn't mean to say lamps. I got a little personal and direct, like first lady broke that lamp over the side of my people. You want to hit them, you want to break lamps and, 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 and get them frying pans. That's that, that why brothers don't buy them, them steel frying pans no more. <laughs> no, 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 no. Baby, but they cook the best family. They know that, that, that little Teflon pan will do. <laughs> <laughs> The hell it might break that. But 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 y'all know that no 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 no. But what I'm saying is that nothing make a cheating vessel feel worse than a loving wife. You can't make him feel no worse. No why? You keep loving, you keep loving, you keep loving. And guess what God gonna do? God one day gonna pull you away and make, make him miss that love. Y'all hear me now? In other words, don't you don't you come out of what God has made you. Don't you come out of who you are. You are created in the image of God. You are full of wonder. You are wonder, wonder, wonder why you love me in spite of what I'm doing to you. You are full of that. And God says, He told you He ain't gonna let nothing happen to you. He said, it's better that you get a millstone and throw around your neck than to keep hurting somebody that's full of the wonder of love. <sighs> it says, if God is for us, if God is for you, who can ever be against you? How do I know that God is for me? I need to know, if you want me to believe all this, Bishop, you want me to get to know God, you, you got to answer that question, Bishop. You answer that question, I'll, I'll come to church from now on. If you answer that question, I'll be here in time the doors are open. How many people do that if I answer that question? <laughs> nobody raised it. Nobody raised it. <laughs> I'm going to do it anyway. Because I want you when you ain't here. Amen. I want you to feel bad because you ain't here. Because I want to answer this question so when you ain't here, you, you'll feel bad about not being here. He says, since, it says, if God is for us, who can ever be against you? How do you know God is for you? You're here. You're here. So what I'm trying to say to you today, how can you be here and then not want to know the one who put you here? But you want him to give you what you want. And he said, you don't, he said, if you get to know me, you'll get more than what I give you an abundance. See, I give you an overflow. I give you things that ears have not heard and eyes have not seen. That if you really desire to know me. Amen. So young wants say nothing compared to what God has for those who know him. Why is God gonna give those who know him all of this? Because he said. Those who know me make believers. You better hear the word of God. He said the, 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 the harvest is plenty, but the, the, the labor is a few. He said the, those, those, those that the believers are many, but the knowers. The knowers are a few. I need somebody who want to know to bring in believers so Jesus can groom them into knowers. Do you want to be a part of the harvest? See, because if you understand what the harvest is, anybody know what the harvest is? Remember what God, Jesus, Jesus said, don't worry about it, my father will separate the tarry from the wheat. If you are a part of the harvest, you might get in, and you might not. If you're a part of the family of believers, you might get in without going to hell, and you might not, you don't get in, but you might have to go through hell. Y'all hear this? So you, can you see it? Can you see it? So if I'm just a believer, now he's going to separate the tariff from the what? Wheat. 
the believers that are real believers are going to get in and the believers that are faking are going to have to go through hell to be purified. But if I'm a Noah, I ain't got to worry about being separated or called tarry or weak because how can a Noah that makes believers not already be in? How can a Noah that makes believers like when I told y'all my brother Jarvis, when I said rise Jarvis, I'm a Noah. That's why people really thought Jarvis was going to get up out the casket. They believed because I had many believing because I am a Noah sent by God to make non-believers. And I need you to want, I need, I need you to want to become a Noah. Not just a believer. Everybody feeling this this morning? You feeling this this morning? Amen. I need to be a knower. You are a knower. All of y'all, I got, all of y'all are Jews in here. A Jew is not a race. It is one that is chosen by God and knows it. A believer is one that is chosen by God and don't know it. So I live accordingly. I go to church when I feel like it. But when I know him, what did you hear what Jesus said when he was 12 years old? And he knew that he was a no. What did he say? The nose open? I must be about my I gotta go get my directions. I gotta go get my orders. I got to know how my father acts in every situation. I got to know what he would say to this and what he would say to that. And even if I go down the wrong road, I got to know that he sent me. Y'all don't even know how, y'all to get this tomorrow. Y'all gonna say, God, Lee, that was, that was like that. Y'all don't even know what y'all got today. You just got an invitation into heaven. And he says, all that you've been through, if you don't accept it, you, been, you went through it for nothing. In vain. In vain. In vain. Those that Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for letting me hurt some feelings today. Because if I hurt them enough that I'll drive them into a place of them being emotional. And then they'll find out that they truly want to be with you because they'll let the emotions lead them away. But if they put their emotions down, they'll step into the desire to become a knower. And then they can receive all that you have in heaven for them right now you're invited into the family of Norris today I want you to know the truth it's not about how good a man I am or am not it's not about how good a first lady she is or not it is does this word make you desire to know God when you walk in those doors do I feel like I learned something about God? One more time, how many people feel good when they come to church? Amen. So why you don't come all the time? Right. Something makes you feel good and you don't come all the time, what that say about you? Love you, man. Everybody good? Wasn't that a blessing? Know the truth. You cannot fail God. You cannot fail God because he's got knowers like myself that intercede and go through for you. But to become a knower, you got to be willing to go through whatever God said you need to go through for those who believe. Or don't believe. If you want to be a knower, come to the altar right now. If you want to help God do his work here on earth, come to the altar right now. If you know you've been called by God to do more than what you've been doing in life, come to the altar right now.